Hey everyone, my name is Jonah Mersan, Cyberstrategy Consultant for Andy, and I will be talking about my security observations since 2021. A bit of info about myself, I grew up in a dial-up days where it takes hours just to download and listen to music. I was heavily influenced by technology and considered myself as a techie, then just gradually transitioned more towards the business side of things. In my consulting experience, I worked with big multinational financial institutions from providing strategic direction to technical implementation. Now here at Harani, I'm currently providing DCSO or CISO as a service to our customers talking about cyber risk to the business leaders. Before we dive in, I'd like to introduce who we are. We are Harangi and we empower customers to innovate without fear. Harangi is a leading cybersecurity company founded by ex palantir technology engineers and is headquartered here in Singapore. Our cloud security platform called Warden protects organizations in the public cloud. We have a team of cybersecurity experts providing strategic and offensive cyber services to customers across the world. So let's start. On today's agenda, I will be covering the growing importance of work from home security and cloud security being now mandatory. Majority of the workforce that have shifted to remote work last year are still working from home up to today, and the trend is likely to stay. Because of the new working environment, many have become digital tech experts. Workers started to rely on their own devices due to the lack of in-person IT support. But at the same time, cyber attacks are on the rise as online remote work increases cybersecurity risk. The biggest risk? It's still phishing. It's still a human problem. Whether you talk about uh, ransomware or compromised credentials, most of the time, Phishing was used in some way. From a big four consulting firm report, it says that 47% of individuals fall for phishing scams while working at home. Because back in the office, it was easy for a user who received a malicious email to turn to the next person or walk over to a colleague to verify the email. Being remote, this isn't an option anymore. And attackers are exploiting this. A skilled attacker creates a sense of urgency within the email with the intent to make the user do as the attacker wants before the user even has time to think about it. That's why when you're home alone, the odds swing in the attacker's favor. Phishing is real and it's getting harder to identify legitimate links. The best solution is to really grow the security culture of your company and the more people that are vigilant about this and take it seriously, the better off you will be. With everyone moving to the cloud, especially software as a service, or we call it SaaS, it's fast and that's great, but it also creates new security challenges. Breaches are moving toward social and web application vectors, such as gathering credentials and then using them against cloud-based email systems. And this is regardless of organization size and industry, whether you're a tech startup or a multinational bank, you're a target for a cyber attack. So what can organizations do? First, organizations need to adopt a robust phishing simulation program and conduct frequent security reviews. You need to create that culture internally of having verifications outside of the norm. New procedures need to be created around security. You need to you need to ensure stronger home network security and enhance endpoint protection. New approaches such as Secure Access Service Edge, or we call it SASE, Zero Trust Model, Extended Detection Response, or XDR, need to be considered in light of the explosion of devices and users. Next, onboarding and offboarding are key areas of mistakes in most businesses. And it's really hard with the modern workforce. Organizations should adopt stringent onboarding and offboarding processes and policies to mitigate insider threat risk. You can use a remote desktop such as AWS workspaces for temporary employees or other personnel who aren't issued a company laptop. In most companies, these days their cloud is where most of their crown jewels are stored, and there needs to be more active effort in making it work. In spite of continuously trying to improve access management, there's still a high possibility that someone downloads sensitive data to an unprotected environment when working from home. So like us here in Randy, we procured Google DLP solution.
to monitor potential leak of data from the cloud storage. This is a focus on uh, visibility and monitoring, taking a proactive stance that mistakes and attacks will happen. The access points to environment and cloud are essential to places to monitor. Organizations need to ensure that access permissions are granted within what permissions people need. VPNs are the most used and most often vulnerable tool in the work from home setup. So if you host the VPN in the cloud, you have to monitor threats to that VPN. Here at Morangi, we have developed our own threat monitoring functions on our cloud security product to monitor those threats. Another observation is that more work from home also means more rapid cloud adoption. As companies become more and more dependent on cloud services to process and store their data, cloud security is not optional anymore. We have seen that the growth of public cloud services has been exponential. And every organization's possible attack surface is quickly growing with the adoption of cloud-based apps like, like Zoom and Office 365. But only 10% of CISOs reported that they have fully understand the shared responsibility model. And 82% have experienced security incidents due to the confusion over who has responsibility for what's in the cloud. This can lead to mistaken belief that executives aren't liable for losses as a result of a cloud breach. And this goes down to the security teams that are dealing these issues directly on a day-to-day -day basis. First issue is skills shortage. We all know uh, about the engineering space here in Southeast Asia's very competitive market. Cybersecurity is no different. Uh, the organization ISC2 actually estimates that Asia has a shortage of over 2 million cybersecurity experts. With cloud security being a new field, there are even less expertise available. Second, lack of visibility. If developers can spin and shut down clouds, cloud instances with a few clicks, how can security teams have full visibility of this growing and fast-changing network? The lack of visibility makes risk assessment more challenging and they either become overly permissive or they lock down everything. If we remember the Capital One data breach last 2019, wherein personal data of 100 million customers were exfiltrated because of excessive permissions. According to the investigation, the attacker the attack occurred due to a misconfiguration error at the application layer of a firewall, we call it WAF then exacerbated by permission set by Capital One. With this, clearly, principle of least privilege and identity authentication and access management are, your cru are very crucial for securing your cloud-based applications and resources. The likelihood and impact of a breach goes up dramatically when access is, is improperly managed. On the identity side, nearly all breaches involve misuse of an identity. And the number of identities is growing exponentially. On the access side, traditionally this is this is seen as a this is seen as a balance between security and speed. So if you have too little access, things are locked down, but innovation is hampered. If you give too much access, innovation is facilitated, but security risks blow out of control, increasing the likelihood and impact of a breach. What we don't see emphasize enough is the ability at uh, is the ability to look at usage and make general recommendations around reducing privilege and encouraging the constant changing of keys and password on a regular basis when we talk about iam complexity especially in the cloud we talk about complexity of scale understanding and change complexity of scale is about the many identities services permissions and resources. Um, complexity of understanding is about the expertise required to understand nuances. So if you can imagine, there are 9,331 AWS permission. That's a lot to understand. And then finally, complexity of change. This involves rapidly changing, rapidly evolving needs, privilege creep, and frequent updates to cloud service provider offerings. Like just last 2019, AWS added over 35 services in their, in their portfolio. So in this case, what can organizations do? 
Well, you can only protect what you know. Having central visibility solves a pivotal problem created by Cloud Sprawl. Look at solutions classified as SSPM and CIEM. SSPM or SaaS Security Posture Management provides contin automated continuous monitoring of SaaS applications like Slack, Salesforce, and Microsoft 365 to minimize risky configurations, prevent configuration drift, and help security and IT teams to ensure compliance. CIEM or Cloud Infrastructure Entitlement Management Solutions manage identities and access privileges in cloud and multi-cloud environments. With the speed of change in the, in the cloud, you can leverage security and compliance automation to fix threats as they come so they don't get forgotten. Look at solutions classified as CSPM and CWPP. CSPM or Cloud Security Posture Management has now been classified as a mandatory tool, mandatory tool by Gartner. CWPP or Cloud Workload Protection Platforms are endpoint protection solutions specifically tailored to server the workloads wherever and however they are running, whether that's virtual machine, public cloud infrastructure, or platform as a service, or, or container-based application architectures. If you go back to that Capital One Bridge example, these solutions could have pre prevented those misconfigurations in their cloud environment. And um, I know it's a lot of new acronym acronyms, and it's not the easiest to digest. And it's the same feedback that we hear from our customers. They say that they don't have an easy solution for this. That's why uh, Horandi created a platform to help provide this cloud visibility. Instead of having to go through multiple windows, platforms, or tabs in your native cloud provider consoles, our cloud security product warden gives you a quick summary of key insights of the unified dashboard. Fast forward to today, we made great progress from the dial-up era compared to today's super fast internet speed and now with cloud technology. Today, we listen to music in seconds through streaming apps connected to the cloud. But some things just don't change. Attackers will find new ways to exploit human psychology and system vulnerabilities, while defenders like us need to constantly upskill and leverage easy-to-use innovative solutions to tackle these new cha challenges such as work from home and cloud security risk. Cybersecurity is a human problem. People should always be trained and tools should be innovative and easy to use. All right, those were my security observations for this year. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.